What's up, YouTube? Tag All Star here. And for all you newcomers, my channel is Drifting and Automotive Content. So I'll be showcasing my progression as a driver, the things that I may encounter along the way. And eventually I'll be able to go toe to toe with the best of the best. So if that's something that interests you, you're more than welcome to stick around and enjoy the show. So all their speed quality kits. Let's see. I believe this is an overseas company. I actually looked at the website. They actually have uh um they actually have like their own drift team and everything like that. So I decided I would try them out. They are a little bit cheaper, but they do have adjustment. Let's see. It's like a fishing strut. Cushion ride height adjustment. That's pretty cool. So I'm about to look at these in just a second. They actually give you instructions and everything. That's crazy. Got some pretty decent stickers. I definitely put these on the car. They got spanner wrenches. Definitely need those for the ride height. That's really what I need the quarter is for. Because my car is way too low, if y'all remember from the last couple videos. So these are the rears right here. The perches on them. Look pretty good, but I'm not gonna do the rears right now, so I'm gonna leave those where they are. And these are, I think, the 32 way adjustable, I believe. Looks like these have high adjustment as well. It's pretty cool. All right, so here's our front coilover. It actually looks really good. It looks kind of similar to a BC, to be honest. I never had any BCs, but this is kind of what they look like in a way. And this is an 8K spring, I believe, on here. And, you know, height adjustment. It has a, what is it, rebound adjustment, I believe that is. So you do hard or, or soft. And it has camera adjustment as well. And uh, which would be great because my car is, you can't really tell right here, but it's pretty cambered out. Uh, things like running like six, seven degrees of camber, roughly. Like I said, in the video, you can't really tell. In person, it's a good bit. So we're trying to get these on in just a second. And uh, since this is, this is a McPherson strut car, it should be pretty easy for the most part. Just get the bolts off and uh, caliper off. So we'll go and get the car in the air and we'll get right to it. All right, so I just set the preload, and all I really had to do was uh, take the two spanner wrenches to these cars right here and just compress the spring a little bit. But uh, what I did, I just tightened it up just enough to where it's firm, but the spring can still spin. Let me help hold it real quick. The spring can still spin in here a little bit, but it's really firm though. Um, so that'll be our preload. Now to measure to the other side, the structure says you need to measure from the top hat down to the bottom of this collar. So my my distance right now, I think it is nine and uh, seven sixteenths. So we're gonna do the same for the other one. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the factory struts off. And as you can see, it's hard to tell, but the factory strut right now is being compressed, already being compressed. So it's not actually getting the full like maximum travel that the strut can actually get due to the angle kit lowering the car, for, forcing the lowering spring to be compressed, which is unfortunate. But that's why we got these coilovers to fix that issue and help with, um, you know, the alignment, help with how the car handles in general. Now, of course, to get the best handling, I can go with a 14K spring is what everybody recommends me for this car, which I'll do in the future, just get like a custom spring for this uh, coilover itself. But for right now, we're just gonna run with what we have. And as well, another feature I noticed is that this coilover actually has like this oval hole for if you had like a, uh, if you want an even more camber adjustment, if you had one of those, I think, eccentric bolts, to help with the camera and i think i think the, you can get like a factory for the center boat to even go to go in there so that's pretty cool as well the bottom was just normal so i'm going to do the preload on the next one and then we'll jack up the car take the stock strut out and then we'll um figure out what our height is going to be i'm probably trying to do two inches above what the factory strut height is All right, first things first, we need to get this caliper off and it'll be two 15 millimeter, millimeter uh, bolts down here to take it off. I'm not sure what the metric size is, but take those off and then next will be these two bolts to the strut and then we'll back this off to the end of the bolt and then hammer it out. And then we better get the strut off and there'll be the three bolts on top. And then we should better get the strut out of there. All 
All right, here's a little tip for getting these out and being able to get enough leverage to hammer them out. You can actually turn the wheels. Let me see if I can turn it by hand. Nope, got to do it, stay All right, all right, so you turn the wheels, you know, the opposite direction that you need to um, hit it, hit the bolts out so that you can actually have enough leverage, enough room to actually hit the bolt out of the knuckle. I got the passenger side on and for some reason I guess the GoPro corrupted some of, some of my data because I did record me like uh, you know changing the right height and stuff so here it is first coilover on I increased it well I measured from right here which would be like seven inches or so and uh I had to readjust the ride height accordingly once I put it on the ground, but I'm about to do the other side. Got everything on there. And I just left the camber adjustment where it was. So I'm gonna do the other side. Okay, so now that now that we have everything in place, I just readjusted this to the same height as the other side. Now a little quick little side note, just little tips right here. This hole right here is actually for this cable right here, which I think is the wheel speed sensor cable. And this would go in there, and then this piece right here, this upper piece, would go right there, and this hole right there. So that's what these two holes are for. And as well, they give you these uh these two tiny Allen keys, and that would be for this adjuster knob. And it has like a little nut in there that you can adjust because the other side is tight, but this side actually um was trying to come off. So I'm gonna tighten this up some more and uh, make sure that it doesn't come off. And I'm gonna try to tighten the other side as well. So just be on the lookout for those. That could be All right, the car's down and <laughs> that is way too high. A lot higher than I thought. You can actually see how much caster I have, which is a lot, because the wheel is super far forward. So pretty much I probably have to trim the bumper. Um, but yeah, that's just atrocious. That's, that looks ridiculous. I'm gonna definitely lower that. It's a big difference because these bad boys had compressed and made the car super low, but these right here, pretty darn sturdy. But uh, I left it, I left the coil over loose down here just so I can adjust it really quick uh, when I jack it back up. So I'm gonna do some measurements and uh, see how much of a gap I want between the fender and the tire. Now, of course, we got that poke, so that's another factor to it. Are standing right now got that monster truck fitment and as you can see I have a ton of caster like I said earlier so this is way up here so I couldn't put the bumper on because I need to cut it pretty much and uh, it don't ride bad at all it does get a, still get a little bit of bump steer but I think I'm uh let's see I think I'm gonna do Probably just notice something. I'm gonna do like 10 clicks on soft, just see what that does. So I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See what that does. And... All right, so we're gonna test it out. I know you guys can't see anything, but we do our best. You can mostly see the steering wheel for the most part, so let's give it a shot. This is my first pair of coilovers to have dampening adjustment. So I didn't know that for the front, you actually need to put the setting on hard for the dampening so that the spring and the shock have better control over the car's weight up front. And of course, if the car was rear engine, it'd probably be a different scenario. But for this car, um, since I put on soft, the front end was shaking a lot and I kept stopping thinking that something was wrong, but it was just the dampening was too soft. Plus the AK spring was also too soft to control the car's weight over bumps. So eventually after this um, video, I ended up putting the 14K springs on there and I'll give an update on that later on.
too bad. Front, front wheels feel like they're kind of bouncy a little bit. Huh. Honestly, the front feels unpredictable, really. I don't know why. There was also another underlining issue that I was having with the car, and that was my VCT solenoids starting to fail for me drifting the car. And having that constant on and off throttle was actually making them fail. Now the VCT solenoids that was on the car were actually from rockauto.com, and it's not to knock them or anything like that, it's just a cheaper VCT solenoid that I installed on the car a year ago, because a year ago I had a misfire issue thinking that it was a VCT solenoids, but it actually wasn't. It was the fact that I was putting too thick of an oil in the car, and it was locking up the cam gears. So once I changed the oil, it actually freed up the cam gears and the car drove normal. But the more and more I drifted the car with the non-OEM VCT solenoids, the more and more it started to fail. And in this video, the car was barely able to spin the tires that I had on it because the VCT solenoids were failing. Yeah, it just feels weird. And the steering gets stuck a little bit. I don't know why. simply has the right grip that could be it too so i ended up changing the vct solenoids redoing the preload and adjusting and dampening to where it is now and i still drifted on the ak springs and in the next video you'll see that i have changed them and i'll give you an update on the angle kit and everything like that but the car actually drove a lot better but since i had those um 255 tires on the rear uh in the drive for some reason those particular tires were really grippy so i had to drive the car really aggressively to be able to um, get it to do what i want it to do Thank you. 